I mihi ana koutou i te kaupapa, i hui nei tātou, i tēnei rā, tēnā koutou katoa. Kei te whakaaro a hau mō ngā manuhiri tauiwi, Māori anō hoki i kahauru mai ana ki rōtō i a mātou. Ka kauhautia ngā kaupapa o te wā mō te whāna ora, nō reira tēnā koutou katoa. It is an honour and a privilege to be here. Um, it is an honour and privilege not only to present the kaupapa of Waipareta, but in fact really the kaupapa of all of us in Whanaora who are deeply embedded in our communities. It is only one story to share, and no doubt there are a hundred more stories to share over the next three days, but hopefully through this presentation it will actually set up the key themes, the key challenges, the key strengths that all of us face when we're on the ground, trying to make at the end of the day outcomes that are enduring for our people. Kia ora koutou. So the topic for today is understanding real investment for outcomes. And I thought what we'd do by that is just share a little bit about Tafano Waipareira and how it has grown. Tafano Waipareira has been in place now for over 40 years. And over 40 years, it has seen it grow from the days some of us remember in the 1980s where we had Maxis mana programs. And that was really our first start into the gauge of how we could better our people on the ground as Māori organisations for Māori by Māori. And then in the 1990s, we started to see some of our organisations, iwi, urban Māori and other emerging providers start to deliver not only social services but health services for our people. And that really was a significant milestone for us and the advent of providers, Māori providers, for ourselves, by ourselves, for our people, evolve. And that was a time when we started to grow our strength as being a provider of a service and developing our capacity to do that on our own. The journey hasn't stopped there. The journey sees us today integrated in a whole range of services and provision of delivery to our people. For Tafana Waipareira, we have progressed from becoming just a provider. We have known ourselves now as being a community anchor organisation. What does that mean? It means more than just being a provider of services. It means deeply being deeply embedded where our shareholders are our whanau, where our governance group is actually our community, our whanau, who dictate what we should be doing for them. Who, while we report to funders on our compliance, I'm going to share with you the story that really our job as providers and as community anchor organisations is continually to report by our board on the change that matters for our whānau. That is what we're accountable for, and this presentation is how we look at the outcomes that make the difference for our whānau on the ground so that we can report to them. That is what underpins real investment for outcomes as we move forward today. So what does a community anchor organisation mean? For a number of us now, we've moved from being a provider of a service. We're actually about building community resilience for social change, but also engaging, engaging and leading public reform. And I'm going to share some of the public policy reform that is community anchor organisations with support of all. Now, if we understand our leap to that role, we understand that, in fact, we have platforms for change, for enduring change for our families, not one-off outcomes that then change two years later, but we have a more substantial platform for change. What does that mean for Te Whānau Waipareira? We have three platforms for change that are born and bred out of the urban Māori movement in West Auckland. The first is Kōrere Fano whānau transformation, the delivery of integrated services to our people. But that on its own cannot work, as we have heard today from Meripika and our minister. Hapuri Mumuho, thriving communities, working collaboratively together with other like-minded groups is a significant part of ensuring enduring change for our people. The third part is mana Māori. Advocacy has always been at the heart of West Auckland. We have a CEO who has a risk for appetite, who's not afraid to fight the good fight. <laughs> but in fact, as I'll share with you today, that is just a successful ingredient that you must have 
if we're to make real change on the ground for our people in our communities. It's not one or the other of these platforms that change, it is all three. So Ngahua o Matawara. Ngahua o Matawara is our outcomes program for Fano across Waipareira. Some of you may remember back in 2014, I presented here and put a roadmap with lots of turning the wrong way, going up one-way streets as we started outcomes. Well, actually, nothing's changed on the roadmap. It's still very much like that. Although we are able to point to some snapshots and moments of change that we can now report on success for our families these years later. So ngahu o matawara. Well, how did that journey of outcomes happen for us? The first one is that it's not about outcomes, it's actually about a Managing for Impact program across Te Whanau Waipareira, because outcomes lead to impact, the impact that matters for our families. So we looked very carefully at a whole range of tools. Tools come and go. Some of the cool ones at the moment, some of them are not. So we had to think very carefully about what principles, when we're looking at measuring the value that's important to our families, really underpins an outcomes and impact program. So SRI, not so much the tool, but the principles that underpin it, we found were very important to embed in our organisation to measure the value that's important from the eyes of our whānau. Involving our stakeholders, as we know our whānau. Understanding what changes from their point of view, not from us as providers or not from funders. Value the things that matter from our whānau's point of view. Only include what's material, and I'll explain a little bit about that later of what we mean by that. Don't overclaim and say we do it all. We know we contribute to the change. We don't necessarily attribute the whole change of whānau to ourselves. Be transparent in what we report on, and also verify the result. At the end of today, I'm going to share with you a video that encompasses those key points in our program. Back in 2009 is actually when we started our outcomes program. These outcome domains will all be familiar with you now. 2009, our board of trustees decided it was a priority to start reporting on the outcomes that matter, and they do a yearly report on outcomes to our community. Back in 2009, as part of the board of trustees strategic plan, so Mason Jury met with them, and this was the outcomes framework that started to emerge. So in fact, next year will be nearly 10 years since Waipadeta has embarked on the program of looking at outcomes and reporting what matters for whānau. If we're going to report on the outcomes that matter for whānau, Waipadeta were clear that while we had a lot of data that told us what was wrong with us, what was the data that was telling us we were successful? What was the data when Waipadeta had been working with families over generations where we could actually see success happening? Now that is truly the baseline of data you should be working from if you're going to measure whānau success. Our research team engaged in a two-year project looking at what were the successful determinants of well-being across four generations of whānau who had been at Te Whānau Waipadeta. Now that is what our baseline for outcomes is. And that's what the investment that matters is about. Okay. I have a copy on my phone, so I'll just bring... <laughs> okay. Okay, I'll put it up. Thank you. Okay, because I didn't have any words up here, so I just was turning around having to look there anyway. So, so what, were, what was the outcomes of that? Do you know the four key catalysts out of numbers of your interviews with whānau over generations? Aspiration, a sense of community, leadership and culture. That are the success, those are the successful determinants of well-being for whānau and Waipareira from our very own whānau with our very own data. Now that is what underpins Te Whānau Waipareira's Ngahua Matawara Outcomes Program going forward. So if we looked at what was successful with our families beforehand, okay. we also needed to look at a more fundamental change. 
Because it's all very well, we found, we have whanau come in for gener after different generations coming to see us, but you know they've had millions of programs thrown at them over generations? But do you know what? Those same families, two generations, are still coming back to us with no literacy about immunisation, no literacy about finance. So while we can articulate what's happened with a programme, where's the enduring, sustainable change for those families? That is a challenge, and that is a question we must ask ourselves over the next decade. So for us, we thought very carefully about what underpins a change programme. And it came up with a 25-year generational strategy of something more significant. If we're talking about flourishing families, we're really talking about enabling our whānau to have self-sustaining communities. That is where what we mean by flourishing families. The second after that must be about accelerating whānau leadership. If you're going to have self-sustaining communities, you must have whānau leadership. The next one, if you're going to have leadership, you must strengthen whānau resilience. If you're strengthening whānau resilience, to get to that, you must have whānau who are stable, who can manage their world on a day-to-day -day basis. But in order to be stable, the first step with whānau in crisis is about averting crisis. For us, this is the most fundamental change management process if you're going to get enduring outcomes. Anyone can provide programs, anyone can provide services. So what's the X factor? The X factor is in this room. It's called kaiārahi, who have the trust, the confidence of these people who over time can navigate our whānau through these processes. That is the essence of whānau water, and that is what we're now able to start to talk about. So the first aim, sorry, I've just, uh, okay. The first aim is kōrere whānau. As I said before, that's about providing services to whānau so that they can flourish. What do we mean by that? What's the broader picture? It's about facilitating the transformation of whānau through economic, social, cultural, and educational gains. For te whānau a Waipareira, that means we provide services across sectors. So we actually provide services across health, social services, education and justice. As we've heard before, not one program, not one service on its own is able to provide a solution where our whānau have many issues that are complex. It means we provide wraparound programs. So all those services come together in an integrated way for pipi, tamariki, for rangatahi, for mātua, kaumātua. So on the ground we provide integrated wraparound for each of those whānau groups. We provide services that are delivered over the immediate, short, medium, and long term. As part of that, we actually look, now look at managing outcomes by cluster. So what are the outcomes achieved for tamariki as a result of integrated services? And we can also deep dive at different levels across the organisation to measure outcomes at another level. An example of that is what we call impact snapshots. We won't get into the detail now, but here's an example where we look at the services of Fano and then we're able to say, what is the impact? What does that mean? What are the outcomes they achieve immediately and over time? So that embeds the heart of what we report on from our Board of Trustees to our community when we're talking about outcomes. Hapuri Momoho. Hapuri Momoho, as we said before, is about bringing diverse organisations together to increase our collective impact for whānau. And I'm gonna give you two case studies of that that are outside of Waipareira. But first of all, collaboration, it's about collaboration with like-minded organisations who through a common agenda jointly achieve outcomes for Māori. What does that mean? One example was locality based in West Auckland, and this is our one-stop whānau shop, where as well as Waipareira, we have services, secondary based outpatient clinics from the DHB, we have GP clinics, we have the chemist, we have WINS, we have physio services, acupuncture, a whole range, that so whānau are able to integrate, achieve services under one roof. That's about collaboration for us. What's an example of collaboration of that? Well, a number of us in Te Whānau Waipareira have a collective, and across the organisation um, in uh, North Island, have a collective impact programme. 
So we brought together those organisations in our one-stop shop to come together to look at a healthy lifestyles program for Fano, 240 Fano, where you don't necessarily see the outcomes in one year, you're only just emerging to see them after two years. It's not a quick get in, get out healthy lifestyles program. A healthy lifestyles program that we're launching at our Tapai Heading stall today, whereby we've released the stories of Fano of enduring change in their lifestyles after having wins, GP clinics, DHB, Te Whānau Waipareira, and other like-minded organisations in our Fano centre wrap round 240 Fano for at least two years to report on enduring change and outcomes for our families. Not only that, in the store we also have with you, and I'm just aware of time, so I won't share, we have actually written outcome reports on those families, our outcomes frameworks and outcomes thinking. They're also available on our Waipareira website to be able to give you some more information to refer to. So that's an example of one program. Okay, we'll try this one. The next program. <laughs> okay, the next one. You see, I'm going to go over time anyway because I'm going to wait and show you this video. So I'm just going to use excuse, the excuse of the technicians and tools didn't quite work, so I get some extra time. So as many of us here, we're part of a regional movement for, for Whānau Water. And our one's called Tapai Heading or Tamaki, which is in Auckland. Six partners have come together three years ago to look at how we can regionally address the issues facing our whānaus. Now that includes Tūrunanga o Ngāti Whātua, Te Puna Hauora, Ngāti Whātua ki Orake, Manakau Uba Māori Authority, Te Kotahitanga and Te Whānau o Waipareira. We've worked together for the last three years so that we can understand how better can we do things differently across our region. At our stall today, we also have just released our very first regional outcomes report on the outcomes achieved by all of our partners for a program called Kaiarahi. But for the first time, and it's a milestone for us, we aren't just talking it, we're doing it on the ground, but we've got evidence that we know matches any mainstream organisation when they talk about being accountable for our people. Copies of those are also on our Tapai heading us stall. So if I give an example, one really cool initiative that we want to share with you is that some of us got innovation funding in our organisations across the North Island last year. Our partners, instead of divvying up the money to each other, decided, well, what can we do together with that putia? So we ran a dragon's den a whānau order dragon's den, so that we can ensure that the money we received go, went further and further into small community organisations across Tamaki. And they ran, they came, they competed, and we had over 26 new small community grassroots organisations providing an outcomes programme for six to 10 weeks across Tamaki. Also today, we're releasing for you the outcomes achieved by each of those 26 people who ran a Dragon's Den program, and that's with you out at that store. But that was an example of a great passion, and that when you have a Farn Order program through a commissioning agency, you actually unleash the potential. You actually unleash the innovation. And there actually is collaboration strongly on the ground amongst iwi, urban Māori, and Māori providers, such as Tamaki has shown. Mana Māori, that's about influencing policy and programs for the benefit of Māori. What do we mean by that? Oh. Okay. It's not there. That's about advocating for improved circumstances for Māori, representing the interests of all whānau. And as you know, Te Whānau Waipareira is part of the National Urban Māori Authority, NUMA, and NUMA won the contract to do Te Pau Matakana Commissioning Agency. Now, what was that? why was that important for Waipareira? Because our very essence of who we are about whānau, it's not about Waipareira, it's about advocating to ensure that policies are in place that we can all contribute to that we know make sense on the ground. And as a result, Te Pau Matakana, as we all know, commissioning for outcomes as opposed to tightly defined services and activities, long-term value rather than short-term efficiencies, building a picture of what works, promoting innovation, iterative and adaptive, collaborative, 
That is the essence and that is the heart of this policy when working with the Whānau Water Commissioning Agency that supports all of us as partners on the ground to do game changes, to do things differently, because if we do fund them the same way, we'll get the same thing back. So, being part of a movement, this is what's important for us as Waipanata. We're now a collective movement across the North Island and across New Zealand with like-minded Whānau Water partners. Being part of a movement that continues to uphold the mana of our Fano, that puts the aspirations and common shared agenda of progressing our people as the first priority. Being part of a movement that understands what it takes to put in place game changes that actually make a difference for our people. So when we're talking about outcomes investment, we've given you a slight, I've given you a slight snapshot of scaling deep, right down to service level. What type of impact snapshots can you do and how do you bring that up to the fundamental change over time that we're trying to do with our Fano? Scaling out, how can we work with other like-minded organisations such as our partners in Te Pai Heringa to contribute to a common shared agenda for our Fano? Scaling up, how can we even as a community organisation advocate so that policies are in place that better support making change for our Fano on the ground? That's what outcomes investment is all about. I'm going to leave you with a final story, because at the end of the day, it's about the story of change and enduring change. That is a challenge that we must all look to. Far too often do we start talking about outcomes and report on a program. Was the outcome sustained? That is the question that we must all ask ourselves as we move forward. I'm going to give you an example of a program called Tai Tamariki in this video. This is essentially showing how changes happen for rangatahi between the ages of 11 and 13 who had some significant mental health issues. It was a program actually funded by the Ministry of Health, but three years later after starting our Managing to Outcomes program, we actually did an SROI on this program. But the SROI, the financial value at the end of it, is just the full stop at the end of the sentence. It's actually the story of change when you do an SRI that is far more impactful and far more powerful. We have a 20-minute documentary, which I'm not going to share with you today, which we use as a training module for our staff on understanding what underpins the story of a change. But we've taken excerpts out of that to show you an eight-minute video today of what that means using this program. Mental health wellbeing for rangatahi, and this is all about valuing the impact that matters that's enduring. We have met with the Fano to show this video. However, they have requested that it is fine to be shown here, but there is to be no filming of this video, no social media of this video, and no live streaming of this video. It is still quite raw to this Fano, and for the, young, the ages of our young rangatahi in it, who are in social media all the time, at this point in time, it's not ready to be shown and shared publicly, but they have given their permission for it to be shown today. So I'm gonna leave you with this video. That's what we're all here for. Nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou.